It's time for another Dice Tower Review with Z Garcia. Hey everybody, today I am taking a look at Vikings On Board, a new game from Blue Orange Games in which you are going to be using your Vikings and, and placing them out on specific locations in order to have the best ships, have the best uh, loot and control and take that loot when the ships set sail. It's a worker placement game basically, let me give you an overview of how it works and then we'll come back and I'll tell you what I think of it. So here's what the game might look like, set up and ready to begin. Uh, this is a game for three players that I've set up here with the three colors around the table. The objective of the game is of course to have the most victory points, so they're going to come from two main areas. From these goods that will get loaded onto ships, and then if you control that ship you might get a good. And then from these bets that you're going to be placing out on these areas, and if you uh, you, play, you bet correctly on who you think will control that ship, then you'll get that bet as victory points as well. And so that's basically it. That's how you win. The game's going to be over when all of these ships have been completed, and they are capped off here at the end, and they will sail away. Once they're all gone, game's over, we figure out who wins, all right? The turn to turn uh, has to do with uh, some worker placement mechanisms in which you're going to take your little Vikings over here, place them on these different spots, and then take some sort of action. There's going to be lots of uh, manipulation of the segments that are placed on the ships, as well as several other options. But these, as you can see, have a strength between one and three, and a color for each player, okay? You use all of them, even if you're not using every player color. So in this case, I'm only playing a game with three, but all colors are being represented, blue being the one that's not in play is still on the board. So, uh, on my turn, or, or on the, uh, each player's turn, they're going to be placing uh, the characters out, and we are going to start from that end and work our way over here. So the closer you are over there, the earlier you're going to place your uh, Viking. And so I will take off the first one there. Let's say it's red player's turn. They're gonna pick up their Viking, and they can place it on this side, which is a mirror image of the other actions on the other side anywhere they want to and take that action so they could go here do that action then this player will take theirs they could go there then this player will take theirs and so on and once that's done then we are going to move this main uh, viking over to the other side just so we know we're moving that way now and do the same thing from the front to the back taking new actions as we go uh, and that's basically it all right so let me tell you what each of the actions are and then you should have a pretty good idea of how the game works, okay? The first one over here quite simply allows you to be the start player, which can be very important, especially later in the game. This next action here will manipulate a boat and it will let you pick any piece on a boat uh, of your color, that is, and move yourself to the front, okay? So, for example, if uh, red goes here, then they could um, move themselves up to the front of a boat by doing this, for instance. And now the reason to do that is really just as a, as a way to break ties because uh, if, if you're tied for the number of shields on a boat, being closer to the uh, bow will be better for you. You'll break the tie in your favor. And as you'll be able to figure out, by the way, the actions that allow you to go earlier uh, would be weaker than the ones that, you know, you could take and, and, and take a big turn, but you'll go much later next round. So that's that action allows you to jump yourself to the front of a ship. This one allows you to take uh, your own color somewhere, let's say this is yellow doing this, and move to the back of a different ship so you are shrinking one ship and lengthening another, quite possibly taking control of something, okay? The next action right here allows you to place a betting token. You are going to take a look at your betting tokens that you are keeping secret. You have a one, a two, a three, and a four, and you will bet on a ship as long as there is not a bet token already in the spot you want to go of who you think will win that ship. So let's say red wants to place, they can put one of their tokens there, no one knows what it is. But if this ship ends up being controlled by yellow, red's gonna get that token as victory points and put it on their, uh, their big shield here, which is gonna hold all your victory points, all right, and your goods. 
So that's betting. This one here allows you to uh, take a good from the top of the stack and place it on any one ship. You just throw it in there in the bow and uh, whoever controls that ship later on will be able to take that good, okay? There can be multiple goods in each ship and they'll be divvied out from the strongest player back to second place and, and so on, all right? If there's, uh, if there's uh, 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 several players on the ship. The next area here that you can place there will allow you to manipulate the values of those goods I just showed you. So when you go there, you take one and you push it up. At the end of the game, they're going to be worth as many victory points uh, as is being covered by the tokens. Next space over here lets you take anyone, not just your own color, but anybody, and move them to the back of a different ship. All right, so you can start messing with people a little bit. This next one over here, you can go there and you can either make a bet or you can move one. So if you realize you've made a mistake by doing that earlier move, well, you can take that and just place it somewhere else or on a different color anywhere else, whatever you want. The next one here allows you to also load up ships with goods, but the way you do this one is you take a look at three goods and place one out. The other two go on the bottom of the little stack here. This next action over here allows you to sail, which quite simply means you take one of these and you hang on to it until the end of the round, and then you choose to put it on one of these and it sets sail, okay? It has to have goods. There has to be something on it. And then the final one here allows you to switch any two pieces on any two ships. So I could do something like this. Take one like that and like that and just directly trade two of them, okay? That's basically it. As I said, once these are all done and everyone has moved over to this side, then if anyone took the set sail action, they would stick it on a ship. That ship would, again, assuming it's got something on it, like so, it would set sail. If this is the ship that set sail, it has three green shields, one yellow shield. So green would take this good. They would keep it on their board there. And this one is out of play. And we, uh, from the beginning to the back again, in whatever order these uh, characters ended up, would again continue taking actions until everything has gone at that point we figure out victory points so let's say this ends up like that and let's say i have um, i was able to capture uh let's say i don't know these things okay just as an example so at the end of the game i'm going to calculate what i was able to make i was able to get my two bet done and I scored some uh, some wheat there, which is one victory point only. And I got the uh, the nails, which is three, and another one of those, which is another one. So two and three is five, six, seven. That would be my score. And that's it. That's basically how you play the game. Continue taking actions, manipulating what's left. Obviously, there will be fewer things left as you go. And at some point, you kind of want to shift your focus towards uh, betting. You know, if you feel like you're uh, your ships are really all gone, or they could be all gone, you know. But continue doing that until the game's over. Try to have the most victory points, and you win the game. So that is the overview. I am going to get right into it, because I do have a few positives I want to mention about the game. But I, but I have some negatives as well, and I want to get those uh, first. So here we go. The um, A couple of minor things first, okay? The theme seems pretty weak to me. The whole idea that... I guess you're supposed to be painting the shields on the ship to be your color, but thematically it, it feels like you are ripping a piece of the ship up and putting it somewhere else and then ripping a piece over there and moving it here. And so there's a disconnect there with what you're supposed to be doing in the game. Maybe a different theme like a, a train theme or something where you're moving the freight cars or something. It just would have been a little more in line with what you are, the actions you are taking in the game, you know. But there's that. Uh, the um, game I found does not scale very well. And in my experience, it's definitely best with the full complement because every move you make will affect someone. You never will make a move that no one cares about. There's always someone's piece of ship that you're moving around, you know. So I like that a lot. The um, In the gameplay, you are definitely going to be at the mercy of other players. So be aware of that. If you don't like games where you set yourself up for some big move and someone comes along and goes ha ha and then sails a ship and you're like oh wait oh i put stuff on that ship and you just sailed away with it then then you know watch out for that if you don't enjoy that style of game 
the uh, recent Game of the Year nominee, Imhotep, has a very similar feel where you are doing things and then hoping other people don't mess you over. If you don't like that idea, this one does it as well in case you've played that and you, you have a point of comparison now, okay? But then all of those things are, are relatively minor issues I have compared to the biggest one, in my opinion, which is the game feels like a small game in a really big box. There's, it doesn't, it doesn't feel like there's enough game play in here to warrant this size box and, and these lavish components. And they are lavish. The game is very well constructed. You know, it's beautiful. But the game play is really quite simple. Like the board, for instance, it comes with a full quad fold board and two thirds of that board are a painting of the sea on which you put out those little ships and you, then you push them away slightly. Hey, it sailed and doesn't really do anything. It's non-functional, you know. The game could have almost been done without a board and that would have been fine, really, you know. So be aware of that, you know, and, and, and obviously you are going to be getting that much game play for this much storage space, you know, and, and this much of a box and price tag, etc., etc., okay? Um, now, besides that, the positives are the game does play very quickly. It has a nice amount of turn angst from turn to turn where you are really hoping someone isn't going to go where you're going to go. And then right before you get to place your person there, they're before you, boom, and they go there. And you go, oh, come on. I really wanted to get, you know, to take that action. There are little puzzles to solve within it. But again, there is some, some you know, screwage from the other players. You're going to have to deal with that. The idea of scoring based on the goods or knowing someone's going to walk away with something and just betting on them. I like that very much. You know, it's a clever concept. This duality of do I score because I took the stuff or do I score because you took the stuff? And I, I knew you would and I, I swept in there first and said, fine, you take it. You know, sometimes you can get more points from that than, than what they got, you know. So I like all of those things. And then on top of that, the game is quick to play, easy to teach, and it looks gorgeous. It comes pre-punched. Everything you saw in the setup there comes built and ready to go. It's a very nice insert. And so as you can see here, everything comes in here already. And then you can remove this top level and everything below that, let me just get this out of the way, is already pre-punched all the ships and everything. So gorgeous production for certain. I'm just not sure there's enough gameplay there to to warrant that you know so if you don't care about that you're a light gamer anyway you enjoy games that are overproduced you love games for how good they look first then yeah go go ahead and check this out because it is very beautiful if you're someone who likes the theme to be a major component in your game if you want a game that gives you some meaty choices then this is not really going to be for you okay for me i thought it was an average game it's decent. I would play again, but it did not wow me, and so I was, I guess I was hoping for a little bit more considering the theme and the components and the size of the box, all right? So that's it for this one. That is Vikings on board. Thank you very much, and I'll see you next time. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.